Okay, I'm going to get started. Um, currently, now just on meeting etiquette, if you could just mute your microphones because I'm still getting feedback and people have got uh, uh, Nick, who has just muted his. Um, now, if um, if you want to say something on the top toolbar, there's a, a hand symbol. If you click that, that indicates to me that you want to say something. But there's two ways I can either run the meeting. If, if people are going to talk over each other, we're not going to. I'm not going to live the other hear your questions and answer them. So I could have run it where I have control of your microphones. I um, acknowledge that you want a question. I turn your microphone on. You ask the question, then turn the microphone off. That would be a, a slow um, process. Here, I'm relying on you to. Um, be respectful to your colleagues and to the meeting and to just raise your hand. I'll let you um, ask your question and uh, I'll answer it to the best of my ability. So the, um, as you know, dual blasters were declared as firearms last week and this has had significant ramifications on retailers. The purpose of this meeting is to answer any questions that you may have about continuing your business or continuing as a dual blaster paintball operator. So, I'm open for questions. No, Ray, yeah. Mark, I can see, when I say raise your hand, there's an electronic hand that you raise. That's right, I didn't actually have a question, I was just moving around. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Okay, anyone else got a, a question? Uh, I can start it off if... Yeah, Mark, that's fine. Yep, yeah, uh, I, can, I can start it off anyway. Um, I've noticed, obviously, it's gone backwards a bit in relation to the course and stuff like that. The firearms licence course has been chopped down to a half a course now. Um, now, is something in retrospect going to happen in relation to that for um, a dealer's licence? Because I don't want to deal with real firearms, but if I have to get a dealer's license, I'm probably going to open a gun shop, and I don't really want to do that. All dealers are treated the same, for Mark. So the fees are the same, the um, probity is the same. Um, what you do is up to you. It's a business decision. Okay, no worries. Okay, Nick's got a question. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah, I can't see it though, Nick, but... Uh, oh, that's all right. Um, I look the same as I did. Um, yeah, basic question is, um, when the, the press asked you what caused, you know, your back to flip sort of thing, and this is just boggling everyone's mind, um, it was basically your, your armourers, your, your professionals said, uh, due to things like uh, batteries and all that, they've evolved the blaster to so high velocities and the rest of it. Is, is that correct? So that was armour... Also, also, as I've always said to you, they can press air to fire a projectile, which is defined in the Firearms Act as a firearm. Okay, but they've changed nothing from last year, um, where you declared them as toys. Yeah, we've done a lot more research than since that time. Okay, so... Um, let me answer, or are you going to keep oh, sorry. talking? Sorry, my bad, my bad, sorry. So, we, um, you raised the question that they're toys, we then examined, well, what exactly is a toy? And there, as I've said to you a number of times, there's an Australian standard on projectile toys, and a gel blast doesn't meet the standard of a toy, so you can't call them a toy if they don't meet the standard. You can't sell them as a toy. So then, if we looked at it, well, if it's not a toy, um, does it meet the definition of a firearm, and which it does. Okay, so last year you gave misinformation um, claiming they were a toy. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say misinformation, but... Yeah, it was. Um, it's negligent. It, it's basic negligence. Well, um, it was negligent. It was... Um, that was my statement at the time, and they've now yeah. been declared as firearms. And you've given... Yeah, we, and you've, they've now been declared, Nick. Are we going to... Is this... Well, no, okay, no, you no. Use, uh, you yeah, it's talking about people's livelihoods, okay? And you've given misinformation, and you've also given further misinformation um, uh, to the press and to the uh, minister saying um, batteries and all that increase the fire rate, which is 
mechanically impossible for it to do so. So the, the, the batteries, the plungers, the O-rings, all those things don't include in, increased velocity. No, you specifically said batteries and you specifically said uh, hop-ups, which both yeah, are low. Yeah, rings okay. and plungers. Batteries don't increase velocity. No way. No way. It's, it's mechanically impossible. So if you've pulled apart a blaster and you've actually seen the way they operate, you can see it's mechanically impossible for it to do so. Well, we just have to agree to disagree, won't we? Well, not really, but I guess that's something for the course to decide. <coughs> okay, um, GBM has a question. Yeah, I was just wondering if you're going to answer Nick's question properly. I've answered Nick's question properly. That answer completely doesn't satisfy any of us here. I was wondering if you could actually answer it properly, because what you've said isn't true. Well, I'm, I'm prepared to stand by my ballistician reports, the reports I've had from other experts, that they are a firearm, similar to an air gun, similar to airsoft. Now, if this is how you want to spend the time, but I will be constrained by what I can say, because as I know some of you are aware, papers have been served on me, and I also have received legal advice how to respond to those uh, questions. I so it's up to you, yeah, it's up to you. Uh, it's up I want to you whether you want, want to have this meeting as to how you move the industry forward or if you just want to keep going on about how they have been declared as firearms, which they have. And okay, okay, Mr. Howard, I'll stop there and I'll let I'll let you continue. Sorry about that, sir. Well, I'm I'm open for, for any other questions. Oh, I got a question. Uh, is that Serena and Jared? Okay. Uh, are you got to turn your microphone on? I can better let Mark go first. Sorry. Um, is there? Uh, even though they are declared a firearm, is there any way of us as uh, retailers and like we were uh, very close to opening a field here in Port Lincoln as well? Is there any way of coming to some sort of um, like a state that we can arrange that quiet as spring? Like, I'm just finding it hard to find information on how to get this done um, at a reasonable cost at the moment. Like, is there anything that's going to meet the middle ground? I know they've declared as a firearm, but they're more so, I don't know. <laughs> is that coming across there? So I just, I just missed you said you wanted to Strong room? Was that correct? Um, like for us as retailers and to open up a field, we're going to have to have a strong room to house all of these, well, to have fire blasters and things like that, etc. Um, is there any requirements that are going to be um, not as strict, I guess, as a real firearm in this case when it comes to gel blasters? So a, a paintball um, firearm is treated slightly different to a to other firearms. Yeah, and it'd be best if you ring um, firearms adjudication because we can, and we do this with other dealers. We can approve security in in a manner other other approved. So if you've just got, uh, if you're just having gel blasters and paintball there, um, you'd need to. We'd need to know the number of um, firearms you're going to have and what your security um, arrangements are going to be. Yeah, no worries. Because yeah, we, we bring work, up. So you're not going to have the same um, level of of uh, security is what, um, uh, say, one of the established uh, gun shops in Adelaide has that sells uh, everything from shotguns to handguns to paintball. Okay, because when I rang the firearms branch, they did, um, they were going down the track of you need a full strong room and um, safes and everything inside, so, yeah. Yeah, well, if, um, ring again, I've got some of the people who work in that area with me at the meeting and they will um, answer your questions. So, yeah. Well, yeah, okay. So Serena, you're ringing in or, or Jared ringing? Pardon? Oh, yes, me, Serena. Okay, all right. Yeah. I've spoke to Alex, I don't know if that's Alex Haynes, I think. Is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll clarify some of those issues with, with Alex and um, we'll get back to you. Did you leave your contact yeah. details with Alex? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I've got um, 
บ้าYeah, mate. Yeah, just on what Mark was just saying. So you're stating on the record that um, these are not regulated imitation firearms. You're calling these firearms, as in air gun slash airsoft. Okay. So once a device is declared a regulated imitation firearm, it is a firearm. That's in the regulations. I understand that, but what you just said then wasn't the same wording. So if it's a regulated imitation then it requires a completely different class of license in South Australia. No, it's a regulated limitation firearm, which is a firearm which we're classing under paintball. Okay, all right. Well, as far as the legal advice that I've received, to own a regulated imitation in South Australia, you need a Category 12 miscellaneous license. It's only a Cat A4 if you're deeming them a firearm. So you, you can't have it both ways. Well, if we went down that track, no one would have a job last week. I, well, I mean, look, we've, our decision's been made on advice from experts as well, and we're satisfied with the, with the course we take. If you want to push that they should be categorised in that way, where they are completely banned, well, that's up to you. Well, it depends on... That. That's open to interpretation, isn't it? Because you're calling them a firearm, so does that mean that majority of the blasters are going to get banned because they're at full auto? No. So how does that work if you're going to be regulating the same as paintball? Well, it's the same as paintball. Paintball is semi-automatic and they have their magazine capacity is in, in the tens. If we class those as a... Uh, they would be also a category D or prescribed firearm as well. We treat them the same as paintball. So the magazine capacity of a gel blaster will have to be ten? No, 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 you're missing my point. They, gel blasters, as they stand, fall under the category of paintball. Okay. Um, I'm trying, I've got, uh, let me see, Darren. Darren? Douglas. Hello. There you go. Hello. Uh, Darren, first. Darren, first. All right, Darren. Yep. Douglas, you'll be next. 
Mr. Howard, not to go on about that again, but um, another thing I suppose for some of us with built, um, the time frames. Like obviously now you've pretty much just put us out of business last week, not able to trade, not able to pay rent, not able to buy food, etc, etc. How long do you now plan for us to wait to be able to regulate our field so that we can start in making an income again instead of sitting here going back on the dole, which I can't just come off of after four months? Well, put your, put your application, we went to a venue yesterday and um, and sorted through their application and, and, and viewed their venue so that they could become uh, um, registered as an authorised venue. So then what's the point from that once you say that? Is this, is this a one month process, a, a three month, a six month process? How? What would you must know doing a range? What's the general sort yeah, of we, time frame? We, we, we've got to inspect the range, that's almost the final point. We went now yesterday and inspected one of the uh, venues yesterday but we've only had one application we can only we can only inspect what people have applied to do yeah no i just wonder what sort of time frame i'm just i don't want to put applications in if it's going to take six months on break mate i've got to close down if it's it going to take a few weeks i'm fine you know what i mean that's what i'm trying to determine uh, are you working in the metropolitan area or are you regional the metropolitan area uh well we yeah, we would treat you as a priority Okay. Not yeah, I was just curious, that's all, because I'm in a situation now, obviously, where if it's going to take extended amounts of times, I have to shut down. I have no choice. I can't pay rent. So if I know it's going to take a few weeks and I can survive that time out with the cost associated, well, then I can do that. But these are things, as a proprietor, I need to know where I'm at because of that reason, basically. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Darren... If we can have your contact details, we will call you back. But we had an application this week and we've inspected the range. They'll be they'll be up and running. I would I would think in the if we're not talking months, we're talking probably next week or the week after. Oh, excellent. Okay, no, awesome. Thank you. Uh, Douglas. Yes. Hi, hello. Um, I've got a question here, as we can't actually um. Uh, open the shop because we can't sell gel boxes. So, um, to because we have to pay when the shoe, we have to pay all the expenses. So, what we can sell at the moment uh, as a successor? Do you have any uh, presentation for that? No, all we're, all we're saying is you can't sell gel blasters. So, the, the actual device that compresses air to fire a projectile, that's, that's what you can't sell. If you're selling slings or scopes or whatever, torches, um, so you can sell those. external, internal parts for accessory you can sell? Field? You've got to be careful about what you're selling. Um, as someone said to me, a lot of these parts you can obtain from Bunnings, um, so that would be fine. But if you are building um, gel blasters at home, as in the part that compresses air to fire a projectile, well then um, you would be committing offences under the Firearms Act. So that would be up to the people, um, the customer who their responsibility not ask them. Well, if, they, if you're selling O-rings, there's no law against selling O-rings, or, yeah, or even batteries for that matter. Yeah, how about the but spring? If you're, the whole, if, if you're selling the whole device, you're selling firearms. Yeah, how about the uh, like the spring or some uh, uh, internal something? Yes, small or return spring, something like that, or tamper prey or something. Uh, springs, plungers, as long as you're not selling them as a complete device. I mean, many of these, many of these parts are, are what I would say is generic in nature. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And okay. Also, another question is, um, if uh, we're willing to sell some gel bus to interstate, as you say, we can do that. Um, how are we going to do it? Because we can't take out to the public, uh, to for all post office, but. For my shop to post office, it's, it's the way out of topic already. How, how can I do you that? Can, you can um, sell them in accordance um, with the am during the amnesty. So if you're selling them to another jurisdiction, as long as that jurisdiction allows the sale of gel blasters, and that's up for you to find out, not for me to tell you, then um, during the amnesty period, that is fine. So does that mean I still can pick gel blasters out then? No. No, you can't import gel glasses unless you've got a... Um, take, out, take out the transportation. 
talking about transportation. Post to other states. Post to other twin states. Oh my god. Okay. What he's asking is can he transport his stock that he wants to sell, say, to Queensland, or does he have to do that through a dealer, or can he just sell that to someone up there in his legal? I think that's what Doug's trying to ask. Right, yes. You, you can sell them to someone in Queensland if they allow, allow the sale of gel blasters in Queensland. So you can walk into a post office and then send it in a box, sealed up? Yes. But will post office accept it because this is a firearm now? Well, yeah, yeah. That, that, you may have to use a private courier and and, um, and explain what you're selling. If I get reviews because they... I have to. have to. Okay, so in the, in the letter that I sent you, you can it explain that you can dispose of them interstate as long as that state allows you or allows the sale and possession of gel blasters. But it's up to you to find out from that jurisdiction if that is possible. So if this happened, I have to sell things to Queensland, to gel blasters. Would that be all right for you to, to give a proof or something like that, a letter for that? If you, ring, um, if you ring our adjudication section, we'll talk through how to dispose of your gel blasters. So does that mean that I can't take a gel blaster post office now to post it? No, I wouldn't have thought so. So ring us and we will we will work, uh, work through what you're trying to achieve, okay? So just ring the general firearms branch number. Okay. Mm. Just got some more people. Okay. Uh, I've still got five, pe six people who I've just asked questions or I asked questions with their hands up. You still want to ask? Are they further questions? So, Rena and Jared. Was uh, the was I think um, Peter needs to speak. Uh, Peter Park is? No. Or Peter Heggie? Oh, yeah, Peter. Peter Heggie. You haven't asked a question? Uh, turn your microphone on, Peter. No, I still can't hear you. Can anyone else hear Peter? No. Nah. No, no one can hear you, Peter. I can't see him or hear him anymore. Oh, I can see him. Um, I'll just ask a question while we're waiting. Um, yeah. uh, so for my customers, I've got a lot of people in rural areas at the moment. Um, I've got a, you know, a doctor here, they meet up with all their airbow mates. Um, they've set up a full, like, you know, bits of pallet stuff in their backyard. And they've been playing games every single weekend with family. Um, is there a way that they can still continue to play um, at this, at their own property? Like, I think that's what's, you know, for our customers, that's the hardest thing. They can't actually play on their property at all. No, they can't. It's got to be the same as paintball, which is to be on an authorised, at an authorised venue. Yeah, so there's no, um, I don't know, there's no way around it for them. No. Yeah. Peter, are you, you, Peter, I still can't hear you. Okay, Darren, uh, did you have a question? Uh, microphone? Yeah. Again, probably going back to that little one, that, that confuses me a little bit. I've been a firearms owner for many, many years, and I know full well that if I want to go hunting, I can seek permission from the landowner to use my firearms. I can go out there and I can shoot a 308 that goes three kilometres all day long and no one will say nothing, but I can't go on the same property with my fully licensed gel blaster and shoot it. That is where I'm kind of a little bit confused and I don't understand. I understand the paintball side of things and certainly as being a handgun owner, I understand how the handgun and the club issue and not using it outside the club works. I'm, I'm very, very well aware of uh, what I should and shouldn't do with firearms, but I'm very confused as to why I can shoot a rifle, a shotgun, anything I want on a property, but I cannot fire a gel blaster. Okay, uh, uh, 
Thanks, Darren. As I've um, said before, the um, gel glasses are treated the same as paintball, and the rules for paintball are exactly the same. Um, and look, I appreciate what you're saying in a rural environment, but we've also got a lot of owners in a um, urban environment. Was the uh, range that you say that you've visited and may be open within two weeks so people can actually go out and use their gel blasters already an established paintball field or is it an actual gel blaster field? Which, which uh, I understand it's a gel blaster field. So it was never a paintball field? No. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Darren, you've had your question? Yep, you're right. Yep. Um, Mark, did you have another question? Mark Jamison? Yes, yeah, I've got another question. Um, obviously, you keep saying that you want to try to help the industry a little bit. Um, now, this section where you can't use your gel blaster in your backyard and that, is that something that you can um, try to rectify for the future? No. No, you so just flat out don't want to do that at all? No, let's see. It's consistent with paintball. You know, so, they care if it's consistent with paintball or not. You know these things don't hurt like paintball. And for us to be able to go to a friend's farm and shoot a real gun all day long, but my son can't sit out in that farm and use his gel blaster is pretty much ridiculous, and you know that. So are you willing to help with the industry to resolve that or not? What I'm... Uh, no. No? It's okay, the, the next same. question I'd like to ask anyway... Right, so just let me finish answering that. It's, it's got to be the same. As, as paintball, otherwise it gel glasses are getting... It doesn't have to be the same. You just, you're just saying that you're not prepared to. It doesn't have to be. So don't right. tell me that. Why would I give gel glasses an unfair advantage over paintball? I don't care. I'm just asking. I've got another question. In yep. regards to getting a gel blaster license, can you please confirm what categories I need to have under my A license to be able to use a gel blaster? Category 4. 2, 3, 4, 12? 4. Could you repeat that, please? Four. And is that it? Only four? Only four. Okay, thank you. That's all my questions. Thanks. No worries. Peter, I still can't hear you. I can see your lips moving. But... Uh, GBM. Um, I was just curious as to why, when this all started, uh, it was about the firing mechanism, and then as to recent press conferences you're bringing up that it is the way that they look? No, that's not the primary consideration. The primary consideration is that they um, compress air to fire a projectile, but it is also concerning from a police and community perspective that they look like a firearm of another class. I definitely understand your concern, but they don't compress air. Well, the, you know, the experts I've used have said they do. Um, Jonathan. Jonathan Cook, you had your hand up? No? So I just want to clarify, because the, they do break quite regularly, and I've been repairing mine as they break. So what qualifications am I going to require so that I can repair my own toys or gel glasses as they break? Well, that, that's up to you, to ha how you repair your, um, your gel blasters. But uh, you, what I'm asking talk, is when they do break, talk, what qualifications will I need to repair them? Are you talking from, are you a deal, Are you going to be a dealer or are you just talking as an individual? I'm a field owner and a player. Right, so are you planning on having um, gel blasters that you would rent out to people when you want to repair those or um, or, or is, that what you're, is that what you're trying to... Say? If we are renting them out, repair those ones, and just as a player myself, do I need a special qualification to repair my own blasters? I can't see any impediment on um, you um, repairing your own gel blasters. But if you're repairing uh, someone else's gel blasters, they bring them in um, and they would obviously have to have a license and have it registered, then 
you're acting as a dealer. So depending on what license that you've got. So if you're running your own skirmish business and the, I don't know, the stock falls off, there's nothing, there's nothing I can do to stop you from repairing that um, gel blaster. But will he be convicted if he is repairing a blaster or um, doing that sort of stuff? I guess that's another question that we're worried about. Like if we repair, like my partner repairs his blaster and he gets caught doing so, will he be convicted for, you know, committing a crime? No. Okay. Okay, um... So can I just finish off my question before we start on another one? Yep. As part of repairing the blaster, the mechanism needs to go through its process. So if I go through the process, push the button, it, it pulls the plunger back and moves to see if it's repaired, is that then breaking the law? Are you firing it? Are you Even firing without the... anything coming out of the end of it. So the mechanism work is, is moving through its process. There's nothing loaded into it, but I need to see if it's if it's repaired. If you look, all I'll say is if you're firing it, it's got to be fired at a gel blaster slash paintball authorised venue. If you're not firing it, then um, repair it at your wherever you're repairing it. But if it if it's um, you know, you, you've obviously got you'll have to have a gel blaster paintball license um, whether you're repairing it at home if you've got it at home but you normally store them uh, at your venue well then yeah, you might be in trouble because you might not be meeting the security code of practice but what happens what you're saying is if there's no projectile coming out is that class that's firing it or not yeah firing is firing a projectile so if no projectile comes out that's fine you can pull the trigger and let it run all day long without it being a concern to you guys. Yeah. Uh, hang on, I'm just re reading a, I've got a question from Peter Heggie. Um, Peter wants to show a photograph. All right, I've just got to get back to the chat. Right. Okay, Peter, show your photograph. I can't see you, Peter. That looks pretty scary, Pete. Yeah, I don't have... Hang on. No, I, I don't have... Um, I don't have a picture of Peter. That's convenient. <laughs> Well, I mean, look, I'd, I'd like to see what he's showing, um, but I, I haven't got. I've got. He, he's showing a nerf a nerf gun. Uh, okay. It's a very colourful, big nerf toy, toy right. gun. So. Okay. Hey, you can send. Can you answer his question based on that, or? Oh, he didn't I didn't. I can't answer the phone, Pete, because I'm recording it. Sorry. Okay, so our time's nearly out. Douglas, you've still got your hand up. Do you still want to answer, ask a question? Uh, yes, I still got a question. Is uh, if uh, our retailer want to do a, uh, a firearm dealer, so uh, how long will it take to get the license or something? Yeah, and yeah. Okay, it it depends on the personal um, antecedents of the per of the uh, of the person making the application. But for dealers and people who want to start their venues, we um, will treat them as a priority. And uh, if uh, the, you've got a six month uh, the period, uh, within yes. six months, we still have to uh, get the license and uh, dealer license. And I've got a lot of storage. So what I'm doing, I break the law because I'm holding a lot of firearms, but they are just ready for sale. So what I can do it. Are you proof? Uh, are you move everything more faster? Yes, as I said, we would any applications relating to a dealer's license or a venue, we will uh, treat as a priority. And uh, also, with uh, when we got the when we got the dealer, someone's I, playing, and I can't hear. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, when we got the dinner license, and uh, uh, we allowed to paste in the 